Man, what a fish. Check her out. There you go, girl. It's a little after seven and I'm here at Bait Incorporated ready to go speckle trout fishing. And since I've been fishing on Monday and I caught a limit of speckled trout, there apparently, or maybe just because it's Wednesday, I don't know, but there's a lot more people who got the memo and they're all going speckled trout fishing too. So I'm kind of getting the creeping feeling that on a day like today, fishing in a community honey hole isn't gonna work because there's gonna be 20 other boats there. But I planned for that. So I'm really anxious to get this boat in the water, but let's go over conditions real quick. We've got something like a 1.9 foot falling tide that's gonna be falling all the way until 11 a.m. And the wind really isn't gonna be blowing hard. It's gonna be blowing uh, something like, it says here, like three to five miles per hour out of the south. All right, that is enough. Let's go ahead and go to our first fishing spot. And we're here. Well, you can see matted grass on the surface, but here it's like, two foot deep or so, and you can see all the grass is kind of smearing because I'm moving slow. But there is grass here, so we're gonna do it. Let's get this party started. If, if you remember watching Monday's trip, you know that, you know, you remember how long each drift was, okay? It wasn't exactly short. It was something of a grind. You know, if I drifted across a few hundred yards of water and only caught one, only one fish, virtually any other time of the year, I'll be like, forget this, let's go somewhere else. But uh, I do think that this is gonna require me to be a little slower and be a little bit more patient, which is fine. So far, no bites, nothing that really makes me wanna stay here, but uh, the water is clean. It is a nice little flat. There is nice grass in here. If this doesn't pan out in the next 100 yards or so, we'll just, uh, we'll just leave and go somewhere else. See this little white pole? I think sometimes people use those to mark where it is they go fishing. All I know is that over the years, I've seen them in places where it just looks like, uh, I would think inside my mind, yeah, that's where I would put my boat. And then uh, there's been a couple times where I would be catching fish somewhere, and then on that shoreline, a little white pole would appear. It's like, okay, maybe there's something to it. I don't know. And I'm gonna come off plain. I'm gonna look at my graph. There's a crab trap off to my left with no marker on it. There's another crab trap off to my right with no marker on it. Very typical Louisiana. And so far, no grass. Oh, that would be uh, probably one of those stumps I saw. Well, let's go get it out. Oh, yep. That is an amazing oyster look at this old oyster you can't even eat it because it's just a shell from a hundred years ago it's a beautiful oyster all right well at least i'm catching things that aren't fixed to the bottom anymore so that's good i'm moving up anybody can reel in a fish that's not hard it's hard as finding them and figuring them out Ooh, what's this i think it's another oyster man Okay, all right, Devin, here. Well, I got the oyster pattern figured out. The most fun thing you can do when fishing is finding a catching fish on your own. Oh, could this be a trout or is it another oyster? Oh man, if it's an oyster, it fights back. It's a freaking bass. Come on, man. Dude, it's not a bad bass either. Buddy, you wanna take a ride home and go live in my pond? People there won't eat you. It's not the fish I'm targeting, but it's it's a nice bass. I'll take that. All right, this just ain't happening. It's time to keep on rolling. Okay. Well, there's definitely no grass, and I made a few casts just to be warm and fuzzy, so I'm just gonna make my way out of here. There's a little voice in my head saying I have to go back to that community honey hole and duke it out with a with everyone else if I want to catch any amount of fish. I would really like to not do that. All I have to do is catch one decent speckled trout here for me to say, okay, 
I'm going to give this my time. But man, if I just don't blast anything on this stretch, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get up in arms over it. All right, so I am not having a very easy day right now. It's almost 1030. And the only thing I have to show for it is uh, a single bass. We're not looking for bass. We're looking for speckled trout. So I'm probably going to have to come off my plan here where I'm looking for grass flats because I'm not finding them. I'm just not finding a good wide open grass flat that sets up like the one where I caught all those speckled trout on Monday. <sighs> so there's some other nearby spots that I had not planned on fishing, but I'm going to go fish them. I'm going to give them a whack and maybe maybe i'll get on something because this just isn't working now what i don't like about this is that the tide's about to bottom out and once it does bottom out i mean it'll turn it'll turn back around it'll have the wind helping it out it'll start rising but i'm just worried that anywhere i do fish when the tide isn't moving at all may not be good so with that said all right that's my last cast let's go ahead and put this rod away let's get moving let's change things up a little bit All right. So right now, it's 11 a.m. The tide is completely bottomed out. I don't know, I just don't even feel great about fishing this with no moving tide at all. But all I need to do is see a following fish or something like that for me to say, okay, we're gonna fish this. Looks like I got a speckled trout. And this is the first speckled trout of the day. And this is some of the cleanest water I've seen in a long time. Man, it's a nice trout. Oh my gosh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh. Look at that bad boy right there. Uh, man, I, I don't have my long ruler on me. That could be a 20 inch fish. I mean, it's, I'm gonna release it anyway, but. Dang, skunk is out of the box for speckled trout. Yes, there you go, girl. So I'm gonna keep this up, see if we can't catch some more. Preferably 24 more, just like that one. There we go again. And another nice one. Oh man. This was an unplanned stop. Bam. Nice fish. Nice speckled trout. Throwing these fish back to the water so you guys can come out here and catch them. Hopefully we just keep Racking them and racking them and racking them and I this is hopefully this is a one-stop shop One and two All right, so right now I have 1130 So I will sit here for another 30 minutes and if I get bit again in that time I'll stay if not I'm gonna go. I love that it became overcast like this. This is great This is absolutely fantastic Ooh, that felt good. That was a blam. Speckled trout number three, baby. All right. Nice fat speckled trout too. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. We're on to something. We're on to something. I need 22 more like this. There she goes.
man, I'm all here by myself, no other boats. This is kind of the idea. This is what I wanted to do. <laughs> oh yeah. Come here, girl. These have all been girls. Number four, baby. Gosh, they're so pretty. Bam, hit again. Oh my gosh. I didn't even click in number four yet. Man, we this this may be it. This may be where we punch our ticket, man. Oh my gosh, this is a nice speckled trout. Bam. Look at that one right there. That's a nice speckled trout. Here you go, girl. All right, that's number four and five. Again, I just don't know how much these fish are relying on the tide, but I mean, it's only 1139 now, and if they keep biting the way that they are, I can sit here and grind them out. I'm all right with that. Man, this feels good. It's like fighting, more like fighting a redfish more than it is a speckled trout. Oh, but, man, this fish is barely hooked. Oh, made it. Nice. Man, what a gorgeous fish. Oh, yes. We're going to put you back in El Agua. Thanks for the fight, buddy. A speckled trout, number six. Okay. Man, I got hit right again right away. Right, man, that is insane. You know what's crazy too is that uh, I am completely bottoming out this SV. I'm unloading all the line on that cast. That's a pretty, it's a bomb cast. Again, this is, these are trout that don't fight, because they're not 12 inch trout. I was about to say they're the trout that don't fight like 12 inch trout. Well, they're not 12 inch trout. These are real speckled trout. These are a lot nicer. Oh man. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh my goodness. Man, I tell you what, I wish I brought my ruler today because I'd be getting a lot of uh, released, 20 inch fish released for sure. That's what we're talking about right there, baby. A speckled trout, number seven. Bye bye, girl. Boom. Just bottom that bad boy out. There we go. Yep, I, I'm not gonna try and get closer to them. I'm just gonna stay right where I'm at. It's working. If the shoe fits, wear it. If it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. All right, girl. Thank you. And that is speckle trout number eight. Oh, flip or die. Oh my goodness. On. Guys, this is a real speckled trout. This fish is for sure over 20 inches. All right, we're gonna put her back in the water. This is a nice fish. These fish are too valuable to only be caught once than just have her be eaten like a sandwich. Awesome. And that's speckled trout number nine. Can you hear me now? It's gotten a little warm there, so I had to do a little quick uh, wardrobe change. Look at that. 
part of her tail's missing right there. We're gonna put her back in the water and hopefully she continues to have good luck. Speckled trout number 10. I'll tell you what, I'd much rather catch 10 speckled trout like the ones I've been catching, like the 10 I've caught, and then 50 that are 12 inches underneath the cork. And you know, this might be a good time to try different lures. Because obviously, suspending baits are working, so why not try something that I don't norm normally fish? Yeah, let's do that. They bite corkies. Oh my gosh, that's a nice amount. On that corky, baby! Number 11. Hooked up again, oh my gosh. This is a uh, speckled trout number 12. Hi, right, girl. Thank you. Gosh, what a beautiful fish. Whoa. That's what I'm talking about right there, boys and girls. Speckled trout number 13, baby. Oh yeah, boy. Hey girl, thank you for the fight. Number 14. Oh man. More nice speckled trout. And speckled trout number 15. Thank you, girl. Ooh, definitely got hit. A roll on the smaller side. This would still keep, if I were keeping fish, which I am not. Thank you. A speckle trout number 16. Bam! Oh my god. But. There we go. Bam! Trout number 17. All right, thank you for the fight, girl. Whoop! All right, that's speckled trout number 18. <laughs> number 19, baby. Thank you for the fight, girl. Oh, man. That was a good bite. That was a good bite. But it's good to still get bit, even if you're not hooking them. Then you know you just need to make slight adjustments in your game in order to catch them. I guarantee you what's going on down there is that as this bait moves along, those fish are following it. It's coming across them, they're looking at it because I've already seen one do it. I watched him just kind of follow it all the way to the boat. He followed the, I already watched one fish do it. He followed it all the way to the boat. Just kind of eyeballing it like, what is this? That's why I put scent on my baits just to give them that little extra bit of realism so they commit to it. And I'll vary my retrieve as well. Like maybe I'll be a little more aggressive with it and just kind of pop it like that. Or maybe in between pops, I'll give it like a five second pause or a 10 second pause. It's really important. So this isn't a fish. Yeah, that was, that was just like a piece of grass. Uh, it's very important to count it outside your head. So that way you're, you're giving it like an actual five second pause. You're just not thinking you are. You know that you are. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. I'm not reeling the bait in like that. Though I'm, I'm bringing the bait back to me with twitches of the rod, downward twitches of the rod. You could go upward, but it might cause the bait to fly up and out of the water, and that's not really a good presentation. Anytime that I reel, I'm only reeling, reeling in that slack so I can twitch twitch again pop pop again but i'm not sitting here just chunking and winding it's not that kind of bait
this fish hit weird. The line just kind of started moving. I didn't, I didn't feel anything. I just saw the line moving. And anytime you see the line moving, it, it, the, the lure ain't swimming through the water on its own. Loosen up that drag a little bit. Oh man, this fish ain't hanging on by much. Whoop. Bam. That is speckled trout number, number 20, son. I'm speckled trout number 20. Let this fish go. Thank you for the fight. Please grow bigger. Gosh, that fish nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. Oh yeah. Mm. Guys, guys and gals, for those of you that fish with a popping cork, and especially if you fish with a popping cork and live bait, I'm telling you right now, catching them on suspending baits is so much more fun. Thank you, girl. And that is speckled trout number 21. What's interesting is that none of these fish have been male, they're, or they're just males who don't croak, I guess. So going back to the whole live bait thing, you know, I'm not sitting here messing around with, oh man, I'm not sitting here messing around with, uh, you know, getting another live shrimp or untangling my cork or whatever. I'm getting that bait back out there, kind of moving with the purpose here. And when you when you fish hard hard plastic lures like a Mirrodyne, man, you just catch bigger fish with them. You really do. Wham. And I've got a whole course on fishing artificial lures with casting tackle called Inshore Fishing 201. And it demystifies all this and breaks it down in, in terms of inshore fishing in Louisiana, because there's a lot of information out there, but it's not geared towards what it is that we do here in Louisiana. And speaking of things I'm doing here in Louisiana, this is speckled trout number 22. Man, it might happen. It might happen. <sighs> Guys, that's three casts in a row, three fish. Oh man, when they, when they bite, especially with this fluorocarbon, it's just like an electric pulse just flying up the line. Oh, another nice trout. Bam, baby. A speckled trout. Number 23. Thank you for the fight, girl. Another advantage to using casting tackle is that as soon as that bait is out of the strike zone that you think those fish are in, it's so much easier to get that bait back in and get it right back out. You could take two competent inshore anglers, one with spinning tackle and a popping cork and live bait and another one throwing something like what I'm throwing right now, and the guy with casting tackle is going to beat the dude with a spinning rod in terms of getting quality casts out. He's going to beat him every day of the week. If more casts equaled more fish, you're, you're making more cash with this kind of tackle right here. Man, I was ne kneeling down just to check my phone. That's when he bit. Sometimes that's what they do. They wait for you to reach for something. Like you don't have your guard up. Oh, 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 oh wow, this one is nice. This one is nice. Come here, girl. Oh my gosh. Trout number 24 on the Seth Fighter Tatula Elite Jerkbait Rod. I freaking love this thing, man. All right. Thank you, girl. Thank you, thank you. Try the old reaching for the phone trick again. Nope, didn't work that time. And there's a loon, and there's a loon right there. Yes, yes, the loon. And whenever I see them, I know good speckled trout action is somewhere in the vicinity. Come on, trout number 25. This reminds me of the fish and church I've been out on Breton Sound, deep, deep in a Breton Sound where we have like three people in the boat. We got to catch 75 trout. And we're at like trout number 62 and there's a storm brewing between us and the marina. I'm like, we're staying until we get 75. 
but this could be it. Oh, 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 oh. yes. Come to me. Bam. Well, I love this speckled trout for many reasons. One of them being, I got to catch it. Uh, one of my favorite ways to catch speckled trout. And it is also the 25th speckled trout of the day. Yes! Speckled trout number 25. Thank you. I would have to say that today was uh, an overwhelming success. And I say that because now I know another location where there's not just speckled trout biting, but quality speckled trout. And the kind of speckled trout bite where you can fill a whole box if you wanted to. Me, you know I like to let them go. I'm also glad that I was able to find them and catch them in such a way that's really, really fun and entertaining. And that's catching them on these suspending baits. Look how chewed up that one is. That's from today. So if you'd like to learn more about how it is I fish with lures like these, all you need to do is join my special membership at lafbelite.com. There's a whole lot there like Inshore Fishing 101, Inshore Fishing 201, Sight Fishing Mastery School, and a whole lot of other courses on electronics and finding fish. Above all, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help. And if you'd like to know when the next one goes live, all you have to do is subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. Tight lines, and thanks for watching. Thank you.